Wow. My God. This is a lot of fun right here, I'm telling you. Hi, my name's William Marlowe. I'm an artist in Denver, Colorado, USA, talking to you from my studio. The purpose of this video is to talk about this image. This is my latest etching. It's called Trumpet Moon. And what we're doing is asking for donations to help produce a small edition of this image. Now, this is a, a multiple plate uh, etching, partially hand colored with gold leaf, uh, handmade cole papers on 100% rag paper, acid free. The total sheet is about two and a half by, or three and a half by four and a half feet. So, what we're going to do in this video is talk about the process of how a, a piece of fine art like this is created. Uh, some of the, the techniques, some of the equipment used. We'll also go and visit the facility where we hope to produce this uh, edition. And then we'll come back later and we'll get into detail about the image itself, where I'm coming from as an artist, and the evolution of this image um, from my past work. Now, if you go to my website, artmarlow.com, there's an etching page there. and. You can see most of my catalog over the years of uh, my etchings. Um, we haven't got the lithos on there yet, but soon to come. But this is an etching, so for our purposes, if you go check that page out, you'll see the evolution of my work that led to this image here. So uh, what we want to do is create 30 of these, a very, very, very small limited edition, 30 signed and numbered prints. We need help financing the production of that to put them out on the market. But also later on, I'm going to give you the opportunity to own one of these prints for a pretty low price compared to what a retail gallery would represent this work for. So first of all, let's go take a look at the process and talk about the plates and the etching process itself. Okay, let's go take a look. Come on. Okay, before we get to the plates for Trumpet Moon, I just wanted to give you a brief uh, look at how a plate is actually etched. Um, this is a very simple demonstration just to sort of give you an idea what I'll be talking about shortly. This is called etching ground. It's like a liquid wax solution and it is poured over a piece of zinc. Um, it's this brown wax. When that dries, you have this hard surface that's prote protecting this plate. So if you go, you can see the light reflecting on it, if you scratch into this wax, it exposes the plate and this is where the acid eats away and makes an etched line. So if I scratch into this wax like this, you can see the lines, and then it is immersed into a, uh, an acid bath. This is just water for these, our purposes, but nitric acid. It's emerged in there and the acid at this point would be eating away all the scratched away areas, the, the bits of metal you can kind of see in there that are shining a little bit. That's where the plate is being etched. It's being engraved. It's being dug into so that the area, those lines will hold ink when you rub ink across it. So after it's been in there, whatever times uh, the plate's been etched, um, now you have clean off this wax etching ground is cleaned off and then you have a plate so this is another plate this is an etched plate you can see it actually it produces this image which is just a small plate it's called fish show it's just that it was for a show several years ago down at open press but here's the plate so once you wipe off the etching ground I don't know if you can see this then you have this etched image in the plate. There you go. So then when this plate is set onto a press bed, ink rubbed into it and then the surface cleaned off, so there's only ink down into the etched area, a piece of wet paper is placed on the plate, it's run through a press, just a roller rolling over it, pull the paper off and you have a print. So you see it's a reverse image, it's the plate etched, this is the image it creates. Okay, that's just a brief explanation of the etching process. Okay, this is a, I just wanted to show you a quick shot of a 
etching, an actual etching press. This is my press and my studio. Um, obviously it's too small to accommodate Trumpet Moon, but I just wanted to show you what I've been talking about with the roller and the plate. So here's your press bed. You would lay your plate here, piece of paper over it, usually put a blanket or something down, and then it's literally rolled through. You can see this roller rolling over. So it would roll over the plate and pushing that paper down into the inked areas of the plate and then the paper would be taken off and there you have a print. Just to show you a, um, a basic etching press, how what I'm talking about. And uh, we'll go visit Open Press and I'll show you a bigger version of this um, that we would hopefully be producing Trumpet Moon on. Okay, these are the plates that produce the image Trumpet Moon. Um, quite a bit bigger scale than the demonstration I just showed you. Uh, I know, quite impressive, right? So, what we have here is four plates. Why four plates, you ask? Well, two reasons. I wanted to break up the image color-wise. Um, if you look, when we get into the detail of talking about the image itself, the finished image, you'll see the backgrounds are subtly different. Opposites, um, greens and blues. And um, there's a reason for the split through the middle of it also. So, we'll talk about that later in the video when I get into the detail of the finished image. But basically, there's a few different processes that happened. Um, the demonstration I just showed you is about drawing into the ink, into the wax, the etching ground. And that's what's going on in here. And I'll, I'll show you this close up here shortly um, so you can actually see this detail on the plate. But for now, I'm just saying there's different things going on here. Um, this is a drawing that was drawn into the wax. The entire background is sort of a fabric texture and basically how that was done is the plates were covered with the etching ground, the brown wax. Um, it's called soft ground for this purpose and when it's pretty much dry, almost dry, it's still pliable. We laid a sheet of burlap over the plates, blocked out areas that I didn't want to have this texture in and ran all these plates through the press and that pushed the fabric into the ground so when you pull the fabric off it pulls the ground away exposing the plate so that when these are immersed in an acid bath it etches the design of the fabric into the into the plate. It's a really cool process. Some of this with the trees and other detail is a process called sugar lift which is a process of uh, painting um, a sugary ink solution onto the, the the plate and then when that dries it's covered with the etching ground, the brown wax. When that dries it's soaked in water and the areas that you painted lift away and expose the plate and the other areas that have just the ground protect the plate from the acid. So at that point you can go in and etch those areas that were drawn. Um, in the borders, same way, uh, these are just deep long acid burns so there's deep trenches in here and I'll show you that detail in a second um, up close. So basically, these plates are inked. Um, there's various colors inked into different areas of the plates. Um, ink is wiped into completely over the plate and then, as I said, there's a process of wiping the, the ink off so there's only the surface. So these, if these were inked up, they would look similar to this, but there would only be ink down into the, the etched areas and the surface would be shiny and clean. So then when these plates are pressed onto the press bed, and uh, then you do the collet, the handmade papers are laid out and then you have the, the giant wet sheet it's uh, not soaking wet but it's a blotted sheet and that is laid on the plates and this is rolled through the press and I'll show you that press when we visit open press um, and that pushes all the ink the, the papers being pushed down into the plates and so when the paper is pulled off it's pulling that ink out of the etched areas and voila, you have a print. So, that's basically it. Let me show you some detail 
um, up close and uh, you can see better the textures that I'm talking about. Okay, so these are the plates. Um, I'm going to get up close and show you some of the detail here. Um, when I was talking about drawing into the wax, um, you can see the detail here. Um, basically, this is lines that were drawn into the wax and then exposed, and the metal is exposed, and so when this was dipped into the acid, uh, the, the wax is protecting the plate except for those lines so it's etching into the surface uh, etching into the surface so that when you wipe ink across here and then clean off the surface the ink is only down into the etched areas um, in the background here you can see this fabric texture this is what I was talking about with the burlap so everything else is blocked out at this stage and then you're working on this background same with uh, the tree texture, um, it's a sugar lift, uh, it's like drawing onto the plate and then areas are lifted away in different stages and etched. Um, and the borders I was talking about, um, big areas here that were burned away so when ink is wiped over this, all the ink stays down in there and uh, these surfaces stay white and so the ink is down in the in the etched areas and that produces a dark color and again I'll show you the detail of the image itself um, you've got the lion's detail here in the uh, in the plate and so again it's just textures in the plate that hold ink when you wipe ink onto the plate and that's how you make a print so let's, uh, let's go visit Open Press and uh, show you the facility where this image is created. Okay, so here we are at Open Press. This is the gallery area. There's many shows here throughout the year. And as you can see, a variety of styles of work. This is uh, a lot of Mark Lunning's work. Um, a lot of shows happen here during the year. And many different styles of prints are created in this facility. Uh, and here's the print area. This is Mark Lunning, who is the owner, proprietor, master printer. How you doing, Mark? Good. Um, Mark recently celebrated 25 years of open press, and uh, there was a massive exhibit um, at the McNichols building in Civic Center Park in Denver uh, earlier this year. And you'll be able to see that entire uh, collection on openpress.com later on in the year. It's not posted right now, but you'll be able to see it shortly. And it's really magnificent because it's all the work that's been created in this facility. Um, over here, here's another type of press. This is a lithography press. And over here is a larger version of the press that I showed you in my studio. And this is the press that we hope to produce Trumpet Moon on. If you go to my website, artmarlow.com, there's photographs of the actual, um, us working on the, the print itself. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, it took Mark and I working together probably two and a half, three hours to pull one print. So that's kind of what you're dealing with. I just wanted to show you this facility and uh, let's go back and take a look at the image and talk a little bit about what's going on there. So let's get up close and personal with this image. Trumpet Moon. This gigantic etching. Let's take a look at the final print. What, what would come out of open press when we're done printing. I'd like to add that uh, when we were down in open press,
press, I said it took, takes two and a half to three hours for two people working all day, but that's just for the printing part of it. There's also the mixing of the inks, um, preparing the paper, the setup, setup of the press, everything. All this takes time. So really with two to three people working all day, uh, we are, would be lucky to get two clean prints. Somebody messes up, you get a fingerprint, it's no good. So it's a very involved process, very hands-on, handmade product we're talking about here. So here's the sheet. Um, I'm going to bring you in and get, get close-up detail of what's going on here. But when it comes off the press, in open press, it's not done yet because the paper's wet, this has all been printed, all of the collet paper, this is all embedded into the paper by the press, but then this has to be flattened and dried for days until it's completely dried, and then this is all hand colored with watercolor by hand, by myself, these areas, all hand colored, each print. Um, we've got some metallic paints on the outer tusks and the central tusks. This is 24 karat gold leaf. Then obviously the prints are signed and chop mark applied. But let's take a look, get real close and I'll, I'll let you take a look at this image up close. So again, here's the sheet. Um, you know, it's, it's, this is a fine paper. 100% uh, rag paper, but uh, these are the printed areas. I mean, th this is the what you saw on the plates when I was showing you um, the fabric background, um, the the carvings. Uh, these represent um, ancient African carvings of animals and whatever they wanted to do. Um, this is some of the uh, sugar lift area. All this. Here's the hand colored, um, I don't know if you can see the metallic paints. Um, I'll turn the light on here. Uh, anyway, this is the, you see the gold leaf there. Um, let me turn that light off. But you can also see the detail. Uh, this is some of the detail you were seeing when you were looking at the plates when I was talking about drawing into the wax. Um, you can see how detailed this is. It's very, very detailed. You've got these handmade papers that are embedded into the paper itself. Um, and, you know, those take time to prepare before printing as well. Um, the image will be signed, numbered. This is a trial proof. Um, my signature, of course. And then you have the chop mark. The first one there is Mark Lenning's chop mark for open press. This is my chop mark. It's an embossing that basically says it was hand pulled by William Marlowe. Um, and it's got my hand all over it, so there you go. So that's the image Trumpet Moon. Um, these these borders again are, are traditional um, ancient carving, African carvings. Um, the the lions in the bottom are sort of running hither, you know, back and forth. They're sort of confused as to what's going on here. These elephants, you know, stomping around, trumpeting at the moon. Um, the uh, plates are, the four plates, as you can see, there's a faint line in between the plate, left between the plates. And this is uh, not only because the backgrounds are subtly different, you've got blues and greens, blues and greens, but also, you know, it's a reminder that these animals are in constant danger and a lot of times they're 
in the scope of some knucklehead's uh, rifle scope. And that's what that represents. It zeroes in on the center of the image. And, you know, you can't really see it at first, but it, then it starts to come out at you. But it's just a reminder of how magnificent these animals are and that somebody would actually open fire on them just to get their tusks. It's, it's very sad. Anyway, this is Trumpet Moon. Um, I'm hope, hopefully you're getting a good look at the image and that it's uh, intriguing your interest and hopefully uh, you'll want to get involved. Alright, so there you have it. That's the scoop on Trumpet Moon. And so we're trying to raise $5,000 to produce 30 signed and numbered prints. Very small, very limited edition. Um, in my career, I've pulled editions of 100, 200, 300 prints, um, etchings actually, and many, so many of those editions sold out across the country. Check it out. Um, so uh, in the beginning of this video, I mentioned you could own one of these prints. So we're asking $1,500 up front to reserve a print. Now we'll keep track of the order that the pledge comes in and whatever order your pledge comes in, if it's $1,500, you get a print. You, you reserve that print and you'll get that. That'll be the number, signed number print. So if you're the third person, you get three out of 30. Um, now, you know, if you just want to make a donation to help us in production, that would be fantastic. Um, and we'll still keep track of the order in which you pledged or donated and keep you on a list and uh, contact you later on down the road if, and see if you would like first right of refusal to uh, purchase one of the prints. Now $1,500 is extremely reasonable, believe me, if you walk into a retail gallery and try to buy a piece of artwork like this, um, you're talking double, not triple that price. Uh, big time. Those of you that know, know. So, um, we're hoping you'll consider getting into collecting prints. Um, it's kind of a cool thing, you know. Um, if you decided you weren't interested in, in printmaking and didn't know anything about it, wanted to start collecting, I'll tell you what, Open Press, where we visited earlier, uh, is a great place to get started. Um, he's got an inventory down there of just some amazing work from all over the world. Um, various artists, you can start with a tiny little etching or lithograph, or you can start with large format work like this. So, um, down the road we're hoping if things go well we want to do a series of these large format etchings. And, um, you know, as I said, if, if, if somehow if we got um, more than thirty fifteen hundred dollar pledges of people that want to reserve a print will uh, keep you on a list and contact you and either send your money back to you um, or you can be on a list for the next image which would probably be six months down the road but um, nonetheless you'd be on the list you'd be in in the hierarchy as they say so anyway that's about it I think we've covered everything um, I hope you've enjoyed this video if nothing else maybe you've learned something about fine art printmaking that you didn't know about before or didn't even know it existed so that's a good thing and uh, we're just hoping you'll you'll get involved you know art saves lives man and uh, it's uh, it's a beautiful thing so get involved and uh, hope you have a great day thanks for taking the time to watch us